speed drill pace trucks tonight. One will pull off and then we'll await starter's orders. We're going to make sure everybody's in line, everybody's lined up, everybody's ready to go. We're going to make sure all the pieces are in place. The green flag will fly and the timer will start. And Jonathan, barring a red flag, we will not stop this race. Three hours. There may be some yellow flags. There may be the necessity of our track emergency vehicles to maybe remove a piece of wrecked racing equipment, maybe help clean up the track. But this race will go on for a full three hours. You can see the excitement start to build. The RPMs climb as these drivers prepare for vehicular combat, Jonathan. Jay Baker, one to go. One to go next time by. These 28 machines will go green. This will be the most thunderous start in Speedrome World Championship history. The pace car is pulled off. The field is under the direction of the pole sitter, Rodney the Rocket Sizemore, and defending track champion, Bruce Tunney. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, on your feet, everybody, as the 27th Annual Marion K. Spices World Championship is about to begin. The chills going up and down the backs. The drivers tighten the belts. They are ready. They're going to be looking for the green flag this time around. Rodney the Rocket Sizemore brings them down, and the green flag flies at the speed roll. Absolutely incredible start as this field of 28 gets away. And Jonathan, everybody is away okay. Nobody got into anybody at the start as Bruce Tunney takes the early lead. All cars through safe on the first lap. Bruce Tunney, your leader for lap number one of the World Championship of what could be 400 to 500. They'll have to go through the crossover. Uh, 800 to 1,000 times. Look out! Already! Oh, World Champion! Curtis McMurtry gathered up in an accident. Already, Curtis McMurtry gathered up the reigning World Figure 8 champion. And that is Leonard Basham's equipment, number 9L. Leonard in an especially tough situation. Steve the Bull Durham in car number 88. These drivers will be able to leave the track and make repairs. But it was an unfortunate situation as one of our out-of-town drivers, I believe that is Gordon Brown. Gordon Brown just never got away from the start-finish line. No, uh, he didn't. And uh, a very tough break for Gordon Brown. Didn't mean to cause that accident, but when you've got that stream of cars, somebody uh, looks one way, misjudges the next. I don't believe anybody got hurt in that. Some equipment did get bent, as you know. The rules do allow for the drivers to leave the track, make repairs with their crews, and then rejoin the race. Jonathan, the fireworks in the sky, the fireworks on the track. Already we have an incident involving Gordon Brown. Gordon Brown from Florida, a man who really knows his way around figure eight racing. And for whatever reason, it just seemed like the equipment let him down. It is rather unfortunate. Gordon Brown really had nowhere to go. He had slowed up, hoping to find that hole through the middle of the crossover, the oncoming traffic. And unfortunately, cars coming off of turn number two at the figure eight track were already two and three wide, and they had nowhere to go. And unfortunately, that took up cars involved in that wreck. Gordon Brown, the tin car of Donnie Garrigus. So unfortunately, his evening has been a little bit delayed. Looks like Curtis McMurtry has stayed on the racetrack, and he is continuing to circle around this facility. And really, maybe no damage to that machine to so the reigning world champion. Maybe gets through unscathed. Well, I'll tell you what. These cars are built extremely tough. They can take some damage. Uh, aerodynamics, obviously, a factor. These cars are built primarily for driver protection, but they're also built to be extremely sturdy race cars. So as you said, maybe the reigning world champion might have gotten away with it as he did make contact at the crossover. As we clearly saw, Leonard Basham appear to have gotten the absolute worst end of that as we saw a split radiator and some body damage the car number 9L. The clock continues to run. This is the yellow flag we talked about. Our speed drone pit crew will rapidly, they have the rapid response team out tonight, Jonathan, and they are going to, as quickly as possible, re-prepare the race surface, move the equipment out of the way, and then not stand in the way of what was going to be outstanding racing tonight. Incredibly enough, Jim, you're correct. The facility already cleared off. We're on lap number five. And still, it's Bruce Tunney and Rodney Sizemore side by side. They'll be getting ready to take the green next the, time by. There is very little change at the head of the field. That's not to be unexpected. 
but the battle will break out as they expect green this time around. They're waiting for the green flag and they get it. Bruce Tunney with the jump on Rodney the Rocket Sizemore. Bruce Tunney will lead on this restart and then right behind him it's Sizemore, Wild Bill Tunney and the big dog Bobby Dalton. Dalton is hungry for victory tonight. You know, with the three-hour format, Jonathan, you, you think you can nurse the equipment, but it has been described as a sprint that lasts three hours long. This is an endurance race on one level, but a sprint on another. As Bruce Tunney leads this field, and Casey White, Casey White at the south end of the racetrack gets spun around, but is able to continue. Don't forget, Jay Baker, that because of the cars that were involved in the accident, we have added more cars to the field. The first old man, Tony Anderson from Sportsdrome in the Jeffersonville area. He's on the racetrack now. He's going down a couple laps. He can be somebody who can make up a couple laps really easily, but this field has already had four figure eight crossover traffic. Amazing already feeling feeling the traffic at the crossover. Bruce Tunney, who knows how to negotiate that crossover, but keep an eye on that field. That is certainly the challenge of figure eight racing. Not only do you have the conventional traffic in front and behind, but you also have traffic coming at you from the side at blinding speed. Jamie, we've had a big change in the front. Wild Bill Tunney Jr. has moved into second. Rodney Sizemore, our bull center, has faded back a little bit. George Dutton moved into third with a strong move ahead of Dalton because he had to come off the throttle for some that crossover draft. I agree, and the battle still continues between Dalton and Sutton. Sutton has, if anything, gotten faster as this year has worn on. And attesting to that Tunney racing superiority, we have a pair of Tunnies in the early lead of this World Figure 8 Championship. Bruce Tunney, car number one, Wild Bill in car number four. Wild Bill has earned his stripes here at the speed road by being the man who has no fear, Jonathan. That's correct. Wild Bill Tunney Jr. has never been a crossover. He did like. It's amazing to see the quality of this field. And, but Bruce Tunney already starting to pull away as the leaders continue encountering more crossover traffic than Bruce Tunney has a 2.2 second lead. We're really amazed that the cars are able to negotiate that crossover traffic because it is definitely getting very crowded. You can clearly see that group of cars right there. That's about where the problem starts to occur. Right about the point where RJ Norton crosses over. That's when it gets especially busy. In fact, RJ and the group of traffic that he's running in right now is forced to check up at the crossover. Every time you check up at the crossover, the leader just puts more of the lead on the table. Bruce Tunney now with Wild Bill in tow. Bruce Tunney, he knows how to lead. He's the defending track champ, an unprecedented string of consecutive track championships. Oh, that. As Bruce Tunney literally threads the needle, and the eye of the needle. We yeah, talked about R.J. Norton Jr., and R.J. got the pack was forced to get on the brakes hard and ends up spinning south end of the racetrack. They literally, at this point, Jonathan, are doing the weave. They're doing the weave in the center of this racetrack as cars go high, low, right, and left to avoid each other. How they're not making contact, we don't know. It's all about survival as Doug Gregg gets spun out by Calvin Crane coming off the second corner. Doug Gregg, one of our fastest non-guaranteed starters, he'll spin out and rejoin the field. Wow, Greg got spun. Take a look at where race leader Bruce Dunney is right now. Car number one has already started to carve his way through traffic. Some drivers already going a lap down. One of those, Steve the Bull Durham, car number 88. As Bruce Tunney is putting on a display here tonight, Wild Bill is in chase. And that was Casey White, I believe. Casey White leaving the race surface. We lost another competitor and he makes corrections to his racing machine. Top five like right now look like Bruce Tunney. Second place, the big dog Bobby Dalton has moved around through a, a wild Bill Tunney Jr. George Sutton looks like that he's in the third position. Fourth place, Mark Tunney. Fifth place, Rodney Sizemore. That is unofficial. We are five minutes and 40 seconds into this three-hour event. I'll tell you what. As we said, it is a sprint not an endurance race. It is a three-hour format, but you can believe right now that Bruce Tunney is setting the pace
city setting because he wants to absolutely control and dominate this race. Bruce Tunney, a man who not only negotiates the crossover very well, but Jonathan Watch as car number one slices through traffic. Right now, Bruce Tunney is putting on a masterful job, not only getting through the crossover, but going through traffic as well. That is Heiser and the number 42 machine of Tony Anderson. Anderson got added to this field as we lost some drivers at the very early part of competition. And Anderson already feels the sting of Bruce Tunney as Bruce Tunney now lines up to put Anderson a lap down. Oh, how, how wild Bill Tunney Jr. missed four cars going through the crossover. He's trying to stay right on the tail of the big dog, Bobby Dowden, who's trying to stay within reach of the leader, Bruce Tunney. A tremendous, tremendous traffic pileup at the crossover. And as Jonathan said, we're still not sure how anybody made it through that mess, but indeed they did. Right now, it is a testament to the competitive level of these drivers that they're able to stay out of trouble the way they do. Bruce Tunney now, our race leader, is in amazing traffic. He just put Tony, just put Tony Anderson a lap down. But look as he knifes his way through traffic. In front of him now is Shackleford and even Curtis McMurtry, the reigning world champion. So McMurtry, who is doing his usual outstanding job, right now is under the threat of going a lap down. The leader, Bruce Tunney, it just shows you the pace that Tunney is setting. Already as well as R.J. Norton, who was, had a little bit of trouble in the first corner of the south end of the section of the track. He is also in danger of going a lap down. The incredible way the guys are moving through the crossover. I have not seen this much action so far early. We are 27 laps in in the first We may minutes. have a pass for the lead, Jonathan. We may have a pass for the lead as Bobby Dalvin caught Bruce Tunney. Bruce Tunney was behind some slower traffic, and Bobby Dalvin swept into the lead. So the big dog now goes to the water bowl and says, let me eat. Bobby Dalvin leads Bruce Tunney. And Wild Bill Tunney is there as well. Let me see. There we go. There's Wild Bill Tunney. Oh, off the oh my goodness. Brett wow. Almost got taken out by Tony Anderson in the crossover. Absolutely as close as you can get and still not get hit. Bobby Dalton with Bruce Tunney right on his tail. So Dalton chose that opportunity. Traffic obviously can be a factor, Jonathan. Not only checking up at the crossover, but when you have the slow traffic in front of you, you can actually set what we call the pick. Right. As the slower car forces you to slow down, a lot of times your competitor can move right beyond you. Two hours and 51 minutes to go. This is the way the traffic will be the entire evening. And Bobby Dalton, Bruce Tunney, Bill Tunney Jr. and all of the leaders will have to negotiate heavy traffic in front of them, behind them, and through the crossover all throughout this evening. Jonathan, absolutely amazing. Very, very busy at the crossover. Bobby Dalton, your new race leader. Though Bruce Tunney has not left Dalton's rear deck. So obviously Dalton has to be extremely careful, not only at crossover traffic, but with the slower traffic right in front of him. Bobby Dalton, your race leader. Bruce Tunney, the runner-up. And Dalton, Dalton gets hit on the side by Chris Green, able to continue. So Dalton... You can't take anything for granted as you start to cut through traffic. Doubt that makes it through okay, but that could have been disaster for your race leader. And we've got more incredible crossover action, and the action for the lead is heating up even further. Now we have the top three cars running. One, two, three, nose the tail, and it's going to be amazing to see as there's race car parts flying through the crossover. Definitely somebody lost part of their aerodynamic devices. As we have a driver checked up here at the crossover, this is rarely good because, as you know, it is hard to judge a stationary object. Right. So this driver has stopped, and wow! Dangerous, dangerous Danny Tudor. Oh, oh man, how Danny Turner avoided contact, we don't know. That was Donnie Garrigus, who was at an absolute standstill. Oh, Incredible. <laughs> Greg Stute almost came in to greet.
grief at the crossover, but Stu is through, and we don't know how. There have been so many near misses at the crossover. And our cars going left and right. How did Calvin Crane miss that? I don't know. Calvin Crane almost came to grief at the crossover. So Calvin Crane, our latest near miss individual. We still have Bobby the Big Dog now leading this lap, this race. We are 12 minutes into the event, 37 laps have been completed. The top three goes to the Big Dog. Bobby Dalton, then Bruce Tunney is the number one. The number four, Wild Bill Tunney Jr. is in that third position. And unofficially, fourth place is the rookie, Bob Tunney, doing a good job keeping his nose clean and running a very good race so far as Heiser spins out turn number one. Heiser spun completely unassisted. Heiser, for whatever reason, got loose as he accelerated out of the crossover. And very disappointing for Jeff Heiser now, who's trying to rejoin without uh, getting in anyone's way. As Real, Real decides just to take an extra right-hand turn, and Sutton gets through the crossover as well. Unbelievable the amount of incredible action we've got here in this World Championship. I really feel this has got to be some of the most exciting action in the first 12 minutes of any World Figure 8 Championship. Mary Case Spice's 27th Annual World Championship will go down as one of the greatest ones in history. Well, Heiser and Garrigus both had checked up at the crossover. They're underway. Oh, Heiser and Heiser, Heiser comes into contact with Mark Tunney. A very tough break for both drivers. Heiser immediately goes to the gate. And Mark Tunney continues. So I believe Mark Tunney thinks everything's okay with his car. And Gets spun out, coming out of the second quarter, he avoids the crossover traffic. I believe he was running as one of the highest out-of-towners in this race so far prior to that spin. Jeremy Miller gets this spin, and John Laval gets spun as well. So once again, our, one of our Florida competitors ends up getting spun. John Laval was one of our alternates as he exited the south end of the racetrack, spun, he's underway. We've had a change at the top as well. Bobby Douthat now is being chased by Wild Bill Tunney Jr. He passed his brother Bruce for second position as we were looking at John Laval. So yeah, lots of excitement, and if you take your eyes off the leaders for even a moment, that's what can happen is we have two Tunnies now battling it out for that runner-up position. Now side by side for the lead, Jay. Yep, there you go. Wild Bill Tunney was very dominant in his qualifying race. Now sees an opportunity, slow traffic, and he gets a jump and just leads this lap by about a half car length. So Wild Bill Tunney, he had an imperative. He wanted to lead this race, and Wild Bill does. He brings along Bruce Tunney and Bobby Dalvin. Well, Dalvin drops from first to third with that exchange as Bruce followed his brother Bill through the second corner, taking over the second position. Do you find we got a big crash in turn number two? That is Buck and Laval, and Laval climbs Buck's car. So Buck and Laval come together, and Buck finds a race car parked on top of his. Thankfully, the collision happened at a slow enough speed. And the caution comes out for this incident involving Laval and Eric Buck. I, thankfully, uh, that could have been a very serious accident, but Laval, uh, I, I guess the word you'd use would be carefully climbed Buck's car. I'm sure Buck's not too happy to have a car sitting on top of him. So Eric Buck, the famous double zero, finds... Uh, actually, I think John Laval passed his parallel parking test with that one. We are at the 145 mark. So almost 15 minutes have elapsed in time. And as you can clearly see, a huge level of excitement. Bruce Tunney is your current leader. Make that wild Bill Tunney your current leader, followed by Bruce Tunney, followed by Bobby Big Dog Douthat. So cars one, two, three, right together on the speedway. As we, uh, looks like um, we're going to have to get some pretzel makers to somehow untangle that incident down at the south end of the racetrack, Jonathan. That's correct, and we are on pace to do almost over 550 laps the pace those guys were setting through the first 15 minutes of racing as we completed 48 laps, completing now lap 49 here 
in the Marion K. Spices World Championship. Gives you fans a chance to stretch your legs, go to the concession stand, get yourself an ice cold Pepsi, then settle back in for more World Figure 8 Championship. We've had some alternates added to the field because of that. The 71 car of Steve Frost has been added to the field. Steve Frost in the field now. Jonathan, I'm sure this pace has got to surprise you. You've been here and been actively involved with the World Figure 8 Championship. I will admit to watching this race in the youthful heyday of Jay Baker, so I never had to work the race. I just got to sit in the stands and enjoy it. But my recollections of some of the previous World Championships were always that they were very tactical in nature. This one is much more like a 50-lap feature race. And with that type of pace becomes comes more type of opportunity to get in those types of accidents that we see John Laval and Eric Buck in, and we've seen Curtis McMurtry involved in, we've seen Leonard Basham involved in. It's amazing to see those guys run this pace, but this is what they've been predicting all year long. This cut race has turned into a sprint race nonetheless. It has still got to be survival of the fittest, the strongest, and also the luckiest. Well, think about this Laval and Buck incident that we're untangling here on the track. It's the kind of situation where we have avoided what could have been some very serious contact at the crossover. So you find it somewhat ironic that you have, in comparison, somewhat of a low-speed accident as a couple of guys exit a corner. But that is the nature of figure eight racing, because not only do cars have to turn left, they've got to turn right as well. And uh, that puts extra, extra, extra incentive on these crews and drivers to make sure that the handling is just right. So we have a very precarious uh, unbuilding process going on here, and we will then remove the emergency equipment and let them race again. One has to be very impressed with the performance already of the number four, Wild Bill Tunney. Wild Bill is certainly living up to the billing of Wild Bill this evening as he battled through traffic, battled past Douthat, and now finds himself the race leader. Alongside him, the number one of Bruce Tunney, and then Bobby Douthat has been extremely strong. Jonathan, I, I know that you've been the host of Speedrome Live. You've, you've spoken to Bobby Douthat. Douthat, he's got a heart. If you just raced by heart alone, he'd be the world champion of any event that he entered. However, he has had a variety of bad luck here at the Speedrome. Tonight may be his night. He is very strong in the early part of this race. As long as you can stay near the front and keep your automobile underneath you, it's always a matter of whether or not luck plays a big part in the role that you want it to. Unofficially, Jay Baker, I have your top five for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the top five. After 52 laps, we see Wild Bill Tunney Jr., your leader, in the car number four. Second place, brother Bruce Tunney, car number one T. Third place, the 21 of the big dog, Bobby Douthat. Unofficially, fourth place is veteran George Sutton in the sixth. And in fifth place, we see pole sitter Rodney, Rocket, Rodney the Rocket Sizemore. Some 14 cars and overall back. He's got a lot of work to do to get back, but... Don't forget, Jay Baker, there are pit stops in this race. Cars cannot go the entire three hours without taking a fuel stop, maybe changing a right rear and a left rear tire. It's all about keeping your car underneath you and doing good pit strategy, timing your pit strategy with a caution, and uh, you never know what can happen in this race. Well, you know, that has been the hallmark of this race is its wild unpredictability. As Jonathan pointed out, if an alternate comes on to the track, if an alternate comes on, let's say within the first three or four laps, which is what happened tonight with Tony Anderson, our first alternate, he could be right in the thick of things because there is a tremendous amount of luck involved. Pit strategy will be important. As Jonathan pointed out, you can't race this hard and not wear out race car tires. You can't race this hard and not use up a lot of gasoline. These cars have a fuel cell on board. They have a small amount of fuel, so that fuel cell will need to be replenished with C.L. Bryant racing gasoline before this evening is over. So pit strategy will definitely enter into it. That's why you saw the big crews as we push the cars out. These guys have trained those guys to be extremely fast when the right time comes very, very important that you get your pits 
and your pit strategy down just right. Not only do you want to hit the pits at the right time, but then you want extremely fast service and then return to the World Championship. Well, here at the Blossom Chevrolet Speed Drum, I wanted to remind you, it's a good chance to remind you fans, and we thank you so much for coming out, that Tuesday night, ESPN 950, we'll have Speed Drum live at 6 p.m. live from the world's largest cafeteria, Jonathan Bird's Cafeteria, I-65, at exit 99 in Greenwood. Our guests will be the world champion and their family and crew as we celebrate the world championship this Tuesday night, live from Jonathan Bird's Cafeteria, on ESPN 950. Six o'clock, come early, get some food, and enjoy the celebration. We'll love to see you at Jonathan Birch Cafeteria, 6 p.m., I-65, exit 99 in Greenwood. I'm gonna guess, Jonathan, that uh, right now, you can't really even fathom who your guest might be. It could be any one of our 28 drivers. We have had a couple of drivers come to grief early on but they will be allowed to repair their race cars and then return to this race. As you know, Leonard Basham was one of the drivers who had to leave early as car number 9L experienced a collision at the crossover. Looked like he did have a broken radiator. John Laval's car now being led off the Speedrome race surface relatively, relatively unscathed, as was Buck's car. In fact, Buck is just going to go ahead and rejoin. Those cars came together, frankly, for race car accidents. Those cars came together slowly enough that it does appear that both cars are relatively undamaged. One lap to go. The Speedrome pace truck will peel off and assume its position in the safety box. Be looking for the green flag this time around as the anticipation builds for the restart. The accelerator smashed to the floor, and the green flag flies once again at the speed drum. Wild, Wild Bill, now with just a slight advantage over Bruce. That's right, Wild Bill and Bruce Tunney side by side going into corner number three. Bruce edges ahead coming into the fourth corner and will leave the 60th lap of the World Championship. So there he is, Bruce Tunney, car number one. Certainly one of the odds-on favorites before this event even began. And Bruce Tunney finds himself in the very familiar position of leading this event. The cars are so strung out that traffic at the crossover is inevitable from the very start, Jonathan. So once again, there's no wait for traffic at the crossover. The traffic at the crossover has already come to you as Casey White and Eric Buck find themselves very close to the leaders as they come through the crossover. Unofficially, the top five runs nose to tail as Fred Bear Jr. from that starting position of 20th, 21st I should say, up into the fifth spot. He is hounding George Sutton. Keep an eye on Fred Bear Jr., car number 94. Very capable of winning this race. In fact, he has been so fast that if he'd been locked in, Jonathan, he would have started on the front row. And the caution has flown here again at the Indianapolis Speed Drum as R.J. Norton came against the turn one wall. So caution flying once again here at the Blossom Chevy Speed Drum for the Mary K. Spices World Championship. Tough break for R.J. Norton, a guy with a lot of experience, certainly one of the favorites here as well, has been very, very, very fast. So R.J. Norton at the Sawmill Saloon, car number 69 special, looks like he will exit stage right and his car will come under the attention of his crew in the pit area. He'll be, of course, able to rejoin this field once repairs are made, but that's that's the tough situation, Jonathan, as, uh, as uh, you have to uh, wait for your car to be repaired. And you've seen the pace. The laps are ticking off unmercifully fast. That's right. We are coming upon our first half hour of completion here during the three-hour time limit. We see that Wild Bill and Bruce Tunney are side by side. Bruce Tunney actually leading. We have, it's incredible, the top five guys are right next to each other. Probably one of the most competitive early stages of the race we've seen in the championship history. Well, as you said, you expect the Tunnies to be out front. You also possibly expect somebody that maybe is setting too rapid of a rate to get themselves into trouble either at the crossover or with wearing out their equipment or their tires. This race, because of the competitive level of this field, 
absolutely necessitates that you run as fast and as hard as you can. So when the green flag drops again, once again, your leaders will take off and will set a blistering pace for this race. Speaking of the green flag dropping, it drops again here. We are back underway for the World Championship. Bruce Tunney leads Brother Bill, Bobby Douthat, and Sutton and Fair side by side coming out of two. There are your top five together on the racetrack. Bruce, Bill Tunney, Bobby Douthat, Sutton and Bear. One, two, three, four, and five. They run in single file formation. Bruce Tunney is your race leader. He has set an amazing pace. As Jonathan said, we're approaching the half hour mark. Two and a half hours of racing action await us. Here we are, two laps under this green flag period already. Crossover traffic will come into play for the leaders. Bruce Tunney will get through and all the leaders come by safely as Jeremy the Frog Miller and Donnie Garrigus the second hold up for traffic. Unfortunately, the way traffic is, you just have to hold up. Uh-oh. And a guy like Jeremy Miller forced to hold up. Greg Stute forced to hold up as well. You want to make sure... Wow! Oh, Donnie Garrigus gets underway, and he got underway right in front of your race leader. Bruce Tunney able to make just that flick of the wrist correction. Had Bruce Tunney is away, but you don't know how some of these accidents get avoided. At least from this angle, it appears they're missing each other by a matter of inches, Jonathan. And almost Bob Foster just was recently at it as Rodney Sizemore gets a little loose by Tony Anderson. He loses a couple of positions. Tony, it keeps going, though. Rodney the Rocket Sizemore, but unbelievable the... The fierceness as Don Eisler almost hits Donnie Garrigus the second through the crossover. The fierceness of the competition already in the back of the field. Incredible as the Rocket was uh, making his march through the field, came into contact. And some of these guys are just not used to racing with each other. As you said, that was Tony Anderson, uh, one of our out-of-town visitors. As Mark Tunney comes into contact, Mark Tunney, wow! Oh, Bear almost hit Mark Tunney. That allowed Dalton to move ahead of Bill Tunney Jr. Now Dalton runs second. Sutton in fourth place behind Wild Bill. Bear had to hit the brakes or he was going to take out Mark Tunney here in the early going. Yeah, Mark Tunney got sideways right in front of fellow Tunneys. So uh, obviously uh, you don't want to hit your kinfolk. So everybody checked up. Uh, Mark Tunney avoided disaster. He must have uh, maybe just had one eye shut because I don't know how he made it through. And that does allow a change at the head of this field. Bruce Tunney, Bobby Dalvin, Wild Bill Tunney, Sutton and Bear. Doesn't affect it too much, but there was a shake out there and allowed Dalton then to climb up to that runner-up position. I've never seen the brakes been hit so hard and so often in World Championship history. They have to actually weave, hit the brake, turn the wheel. Unbelievable the amount of action happening. You know, uh, Jonathan, these guys actually tonight are creating blue smoke with their brakes. We usually see blue smoke associated with the tires, but tonight... These guys have been on the brakes so hard in the crossover to avoid what could be a catastrophic coming together. These guys, though, have been very, very, very savvy at the crossover, and that is to everyone's credit. It just shows the level of competition competing here tonight. Bruce Tunney setting a blistering pace. 77 laps go in the book, and Oh, I swear to oh, oh, and David Real hits right in front of the leader, Bruce Tunney, but he continues leading. That allows Wild Bill also to get ahead of Bobby Dalton. David Real got hit pretty hard there by Eislick, got himself turned around. So Eislick uh, and David Real come together. Real will exit the race course. And Curtis McMurtry just avoided Kevin Ford, and Ford got hit by Greg the Hammer Stoot. So Ford, minding his own business, got hit in the crossover, and that's another thing that could happen, too. Once you think you're through, you might not be through all the way, as there is a part of your race car behind your head that you don't always take a look at. So here is Bruce Tunney and Wild Bill Tunney going at it side by side. They made Tony Anderson do a turn. He did not get through the crossover. He made a left-hand turn, and it was thought better of it. Oh, and Bobby Dalvin almost gets taken out by Calvin Green. He'll lose the third spot and the fourth spot to George Sutton and Freddie Bear. Bobby Dalvin forced to take evasive action. 
he's going to lose some spots there. But, you know, better to take evasive action than to lose a race car. And, wow, Sutton went all over the place to avoid contact of the crossover. Now let Bear get around him and Dalton gets back a fourth position. Sutton drops down to fifth. How about Bruce and Wild Bill Tunney? Here's a pair of Tunneys going at it side by side. They have had a long storied racing career here at the speed road. Guarantee that they'll race each other very clean. But the competition between car number one and car number four, absolutely amazing. I wonder if there's some childhood memory those guys have where one guy didn't get what the other guy wanted that, that's battling out now on the track itself because those guys have been going at it side by side but have been racing each other very cleanly. And today they have, uh, Jay and Bruce Tunney leading brother Bill. The traffic in the crossover absolutely unparalleled in world championship history as they put Curtis McMurtry, the current reigning world champion, won't be able to say that much longer. Another lap down. As we continue to see so many of the great cars running here in the world championship, we've had over 34 competitors so far this year race in the Mary Case Boxes World Championship. You know, a tough break for McMurtry. As you said, he is the reigning world champion and um, went into this race with high hopes. He's one of those guys that is able to race in a very crafty fashion and then take the lead as he did in the Jakes 150. Curtis McMurtry stalked those leaders and then took the lead at the right moment and pulled off a Jakes 150 win here at the speed roll against some, against some terrific competition. So that is a tough break for Curtis McMurtry, reigning world champion, who now is at least a lap down from your leaders. Plenty of action at the crossover as wow. We don't know how the 23 made it through. That is Danny Smith. I actually believe that is Larry Hahn, one of our uh, alternates. I believe that, yes, it is. It is Hahn that uh, had some problems at the crossover but did avoid problems. So Larry Hahn in 23 avoided problems. Once again, just absolutely amazing traffic at the crossover. Don't take your eyes off your race leaders. Just when you think you're safe, two laps later you are unsafe, you're in a pack of cars, then you're out of a pack of cars, then you're back. It is non-stop the way these drivers have to continually negotiate as so many years it hits the brakes hard in front of Curtis McMurtry. Wow, McMurtry having all kinds of bad luck here tonight in the wrong spot at the wrong time. More crossover traffic. But we take a leap back to the leaders. It's Bruce Tunney still, Bill Tunney Jr. right on his tail on lap number 90. 35 minutes have been completed. Third place, the big dog, Bobby Dalton, now about a whole straightaway behind the leaders. Fourth place looks like to be the number 94, possibly of Fred Bear Jr. Fifth place, George Sutton. It's incredible how already we are probably down to just five to six cars on the lead lap after 91 laps of competition. Well, you are right as we come up on the 100 lap mark. We've been keeping an eye on Bruce Tunney and Wild Bill Tunney. They have been one and two for most of this event. As Wild Bill has a look at the inside there, tries to get around Bruce. So Bruce and Wild Bill still side by side. If you look at the traffic immediately ahead of them, you realize they're slowly but surely putting a number of very tough competitors a lap down. As you know, Jonathan, it's three hours, and then we say, how many laps did you complete? So remember, it's how many laps you rack up. Think about this. I'm bad at math, but if you've racked up at least one more lap than your competitors, that's going to look pretty good at the end of this race. So Bruce Tunney and Wild Bill Tunney carving their way up through the field. They've been avoiding crossover traffic, and they've been cutting through regular traffic as well as Wild Bill now takes the lead over from Bruce. That's right. Wild Bill taking advantage of the crossover traffic and putting his brother Bruce behind him. He sets the pace on the 95th lap here. We are closing in on the 100 lap mark. 200 and we'll actually make that two hours 24 minutes left in this event. Your leader, Wild Bill Tunney and Bruce Tunney is
is right behind them. Now they are in that pack of cars we talked about. And in that pack of cars, one of those cars is Pulsitter Rodney Sizemore. What a little humiliation. You're the pole sitter. You get lapped during a three-hour race. That shows the dominance of the Tunnies. Again, once again, this is Bill Tunney's 25th excursion into World Championship history. Right for the leaders, it's Chris Green. And another car, I believe that might be fair. We'll get a better look at the number here in just a second. Chris Green, the 22 car, and it is Bear, so Bear will lose a lap in that exchange, has some trouble firing up the car. Unbelievable. Well, Chris Green, who did so well in his qualifying race, and Green and Bear come together at the exit of a corner. And if you think about it, Jonathan, that's where we've had trouble. It's at the exit of corner number two. We've had trouble tonight. So I don't know if it's a traction problem or drivers are just having trouble seeing each other down there. The crossover has been relatively safe compared to that corner. And Fred Bear and Chris Green end up coming together. And that's a tough break for Bear, who certainly I think you'd have to feel was one of the favorites. He was very fast in qualifying. And he was moving up from that, like I said, 21st starting position. He moved his way into the top five. Unfortunately for him, he will fall back and lap down. But you never know. Like I said in the, earlier in the, in the pre-race show, there is nothing that says somebody can come from a lap down or two laps down. I've seen six laps recovered and turned into a championship. Well, as you know, Jonathan, that is the wonderful nature of the World Championship, is that anything can happen. Bob Foster Sr., who's one of our alternates, has now joined us, car number 57. Bob Foster Sr. is out on the track turning some laps. Larry Hahn is out there as well. And before this evening is out, we may eventually see Wes Spillers, the number 99, who is the eighth alternate. As cars leave the track, come under the administration of their pit crews, and now rejoining us on the race surface is Freddie Bear. So Bear looks like somebody worked on the side of his car with a can opener. But Bear is ready for Bear, as we like to say. So we'll see what Fred Bear Jr. can do. Fred Bear, an ASA, a former ASA starter, a guy who has a lot of experience here at the Speedrope, and has been a former runner-up in World Figure 8 Championship history. We'll see what Freddie Bear's race holds for him. As Jonathan said, you could be six laps down, and as we near the completion of this race, you could turn that six-lap deficit into a world championship. It is a race where literally anything can happen. You've seen three numbers on the scoreboard pretty much repeatedly for those first three positions, Jonathan. One of them being Bobby Dalvin, car number 21, who has never really lost contact with the Tunney brothers. Until Bruce, recently, though, because now he is over a full straightaway behind the leaders, going to crossover traffic right in front of him. And Bobby Dalton, though, still running a good race. He just cannot can't catch up and meet that pace that the Tunney brothers have put on. Well, you have to wonder, too, if the Tunneys are not. Actually, you wonder if they would be running a different pace if they weren't side by side and right in front of one another. As right now, they're about to put the pole center, Rodney the Rocket Sizemore, a lap down. That is Sizemore in front of them, Jeremy Frog Miller, and also Jonathan, the car of... as they encounter all kinds of traffic. Your race leaders are being forced to carve through traffic. They are around Islick. And you can see now that Rodney the Rocket Sizemore does not want to go a lap down. He knows that uh, there are some mathematical battles, and one of those is sheer number of laps that you put on the books. So the Rocket going to be a little resistant to going a lap down. So the Rocket does pick up the pace knowing that Wild Bill Tunney is right behind him. It is Wild Bill Tunney and Bruce Tunney, one and two. And directly in front of them is the number 51 racing machine of the Rocket, Rodney Sizemore, your pole center. I believe Rodney probably wanted to see a caution so he can rejoin the tail of the field, not have the hot breath of Wild Bill Tunney's number four machine on his neck the whole time as they complete lap after lap now on lap 111. We've got 41 minutes into this event. They're running a toward pace. We should 
going to see over 450 laps completed by the end of three hours for this Mary Case Spices Championship. Well, as you said, the Tunnies are running together. In the runner-up spot is Bobby Douthat, car number 21. Douthat was keeping fairly close contact with the racing Tunnies. Now has dropped back a bit, but Douthat has run a very smart race, has been staying out of trouble. In fact, to Douthat's credit, he's taken some very wild, evasive maneuvers, and those have paid off. But in fact, his race car has been relatively There's undamaged. There's fire on the racetrack. Kevin Ford's motor is on fire. He is pulled off. We're going to go under caution for sure to get that fire put out, but a fire in the Kevin Ford machine. Wow, Kevin Ford experiencing a full boat fire in car number 50 and Ford getting out in a hurry. Ford uh, definitely didn't need a written invitation to get out of that number 50 racing machine. So a full-blown engine fire as the hardest working short track crew in America goes to work on Kevin Ford's car. That uh, is the type of fire that uh, certainly burns everything under the hood. So that may be it for Kevin Ford. And I think we were talking about that caution that Rodney the Rocket Sizemore benefits from a caution. He will go to the tail of the field. A lot of these cars bunched up as the pace truck was trying to pick up the leader. A lot of the cars that were ahead of the leader now get to go and rejoin the rear of the field. Yeah, a little bit of confusion up here at the north end of the racetrack, Jonathan, is everybody uh, came to a pretty rapid halt. Everybody had to get on the binders pretty hard. That's Larry Hahn that experienced some troubles, troubles there in car number 23. And Larry Hahn will actually exit the racetrack. I think we have a problem with the 4C machine of Calvin Crane. Crane, uh, through lap 100, was running in the sixth position. So he'll see if he can get that car refired without losing another lap. He'll get some assistance from the speed drone push truck vehicle. As you said, uh, we were looking for a caution to help Rodney the Rocket Sizemore. So Sizemore will benefit from this caution by not going a lap down. And just like in uh, NASCAR racing circles, uh, you get to uh, go to the back of the field. Not always easy to carve your way up through traffic, but it beats going a lap down. So Rodney Sizemore, obviously uh, very pleased with the yellow. Not so pleased will be Kevin Ford. Calvin Crane in 4C trying to get through the crossover there, and he gets through, and uh, Calvin will rejoin at the back of the field. But Calvin Crane having uh, a hard time getting his car restarted as everybody jumbled up trying to get behind the pace truck. Getting behind the pace truck is not the usual protocol for all of our speedrome drivers, so it's been difficult for them to sometimes instinctively get behind the truck, but everybody did indeed line up accordingly. As Jonathan said, an absolutely amazing pace has been set. 116 laps are in the book. The timer is still ticking away. We uh, are at the 2.15 mark in this event. We will show both the Tunney brothers, Bruce Tunney and Wild Bill Tunney, one and two. They are together on the racetrack. And then Bobby Douthat gets an opportunity to draw closer still. So that big interval between Bobby Douthat and the rest of the field now uh, gets a race, Jonathan. The field being shown the one lap signal. We have the four car of Wild Bill, Bruce Tunney in second. Third is George, is uh, Bobby the big dog, Douthat. Fast and Furious, George Sutton. Those are the only four cars on the lead lap unofficially speed jump scoring. It's great to see Fred Bear Jr. out there too, even though he's some laps down. Freddy Bear is out there, and now the green flag flies once again at the speed row. The two Tunney brothers, they've been going at it side by side for most of this race. They're going at it side by side at the restart too, Jonathan. Bruce got a better jump off of the second corner, and now a big call with Danny Smith. Danny Smith is spun. Danny Smith gets spun by the field, and Danny Smith will be able to continue. He actually makes sure he gets around the marker tire so he gets scored properly. Not going to be a very happy day for Danny Smith, but the important thing is he's able to continue as Smith runs into traffic at the crossover. Now your leaders have to make it through the crossover, and they do. Freddie Bear wanted to get, wanted to get one of those laps back now behind the leader, Bruce Tunney. He pushed.
Bruce's yes. as Bruce checks up for crossover traffic. Yeah, Bruce uh, checked up and uh, Freddie said, hey, look, uh, we got a race to run here. Let's uh, let's get going. So Freddie Bear giving the old, uh, hey, how are you smack to Bruce Tunney. But Fred Bear, as you said, would like to get this lap back. Freddie now trying to get as many laps as he can on the book. Had an unfortunate coming together with Chris Green, but his car does appear to be up to speed. The good thing is, hopefully they put a new set of tires and some fuel in Fred Bear Jr.'s gas tank. So maybe number 94 is good to go for a few more laps. We've had another alternate added onto the field as the 59 car of Steve Pine. Our ninth alternate is entered into the race. Now we have 37 drivers that have made their way onto the racing service for the 27th World Championship. Well, and what a World Championship it has been, Jonathan. Bruce Tunney was everyone's odds-on favorite to win this World Championship. But as you said, it takes determination. It is a fire. Bob Foster Sr.'s car on fire again. We go caution really quickly. Bob Foster on fire. Yes, there is a fire underneath the number 57 machine. I don't think he knows. There was a big flash out of the engine compartment. Maybe it's extinguished now. He'll go to the pits, but unbelievable. You see another car with the... Another car with some flames coming out under the hood. Well, I'll tell you what. We knew we'd have a hot night of racing. Maybe just not that hot. Whatever that uh, was, it looks like it extinguished itself, and Bob Foster Sr. goes on. But uh, good eyes, Jonathan. I guess uh, going back to saying this during the caution period, once again, the talk was a month out. Bruce Tunney, undoubtedly the man to beat for this world championship. You and I both know how much luck goes into racing. How many times have you been to a major motor car race, the leader out in front, lap after lap after lap, engine brakes, six laps from the end. We know that luck is certainly a big factor in motorsports. And the flagman. Giving the field one lap to go. One lap will go green next time by the leader, Bruce Tunney. And Wild Bill, George Sutton now moves into the third spot as we prepare for lap 126. Well, they say luck is where preparedness meets opportunity and the opportunity for the restart as the Tunney brothers are side by side and the green flag flies here at the speed row. You've got three Tunnies together on the racetrack. That is Ben Tunney at car number 14. Tunney down at least a lap or so as Bruce and Wild Bill Tunney battle it out. They'll have traffic at the crossover almost immediately, Jonathan, as they get around Larry Hahn. So that is the Curtis, excuse me, Curtis Unruh's car. There is your race leader, Bruce Tunney, Wild Bill Tunney. And George Sutton is coming with this group as well. George Sutton, somewhat of a sleeper this year. He kept getting faster and faster as the season wore on. And Sutton, Sutton gets bumped by behind. Sutton gets bumped and gets shoved out of the way. That allows Dalton to get around Sutton. So Sutton was making some progress, Jonathan. Got the old bump here at the north end of the racetrack and got bumped out of the way. Well, that's racing, as they say. Rubin is racing. And really, that's what those rails seem sometimes are for. They are for safety, but they are also sometimes allow you to say, excuse me, coming through. You mean you can actually rub up against somebody? Why, that doesn't sound even fair. As Steve Prine, Steve Prine spins harmlessly up at the north end of the racetrack, and Prine now has some fire coming out from underneath his car, but he does appear to be okay. So maybe somebody's backfiring. Maybe the engines are set up that way tonight. Oh, Curtis Underwood almost spun back in front of the field, but he collected it back together. That allows the big dog, Bobby Alton, to clear any lap traffic. He has a straight shot to Wild Bill Tunney Jr. Underwood, one of our alternates here tonight, racing for pride as Casey White rejoins us in car number 41. So Casey White, after, well, I take that back. That Mike is Kane. Mike Kane, the car of Mike Kane. Mike Kane's car painted a lot like Casey White's car. And Kane, one of our alternates, joining us on the track. Here are your race leaders through the crossover. Oh, and there's plenty, of, there's plenty of traffic. Wild Bill Tunney had to check up. He basically came to a complete stop, Jay Baker. Now down with only two car lengths behind him. Wow, Wild Bill thought that it might be better to hold on to the race car, so he got on the finders hard at the crossover. And 
as Bruce Tunney now able to build up some distance between himself and Wild Bill. So Bruce Tunney now through the crossover. And the yeah, crossover. The traffic, Jay Baker. Yeah, the crossover is really getting complicated now, Jonathan. They, uh, as we were saying, they're no longer just going through the crossover. They're doing the weave. Unbelievable. That's through two times in the crossover. Bruce Tunney has come to almost a very slow crawl as the crossover traffic now three and four. What? Matthew Tunney Jr. and Calvin Crane get together. Wild Bill Tunney was able to avoid getting a real monster hit out there, but still came in contact with Calvin Crane. So Wild Bill Tunney extremely lucky that he did not come to grief there. And who did that allow to move into the runner-up position? The runner-up position now is the big dog, Bobby Dalton, now behind Bruce Tunney. And we had a spin, Steve Klein and Freddie Bear Jr. in corner number three and got together, both cars back on their way. Boy, Fred Bear Jr. with all kinds of bad luck here tonight. Fred uh, not able to qualify in his qualifying race, and Garagas, Garagas is pointing in the wrong direction. Maybe he just checked up. So car number 77, Garagas, stopped at the crossover. He does appear to be okay, and he's got to get underway here. But Fred Bear, all kinds of trouble. One of our fastest qualifiers in during the qualifying session, and he has had nothing but bad luck in this race. So we'll see how many laps Fred Bear Jr. can put in the books because he's had some very tough luck. And it's all right in front of the leader, Jeff Schechter, came down with the left front of Bruce Tunney. I don't see any damage to that left front right now. We'll see how that may have affected him. But uh, still easy sailing almost for Bruce Tunney. I mean, as easy as it gets because really never any time to rest in a world championship. Bobby Dowd with the big dog in second now, about four seconds behind. And Wild Bill Tunney, and, and Mark Tunney spins out of the crossover. Mark Tunney spins at the crossover, doesn't collect anybody, and is able to continue. As you pointed out, Bruce Tunney is carving through traffic, but sometimes that traffic cuts it a little bit close. That time around, Shackelford definitely cut down on the defending track champ. Mark Tunney spins again, south end of the racetrack, so Tunney is having some handling problems in car number 17. As you know, Tunney had made some contact on the track, so there may be something wrong with the suspension on car number 17. Heiser checks up at the crossover. Also, Steve Unruh having some problems at the crossover. Mike Kane, he made it through the crossover traffic, but it is getting very, very close in the middle part of the track. Oh, no, nice looking Mark Tunney, a big collision at the crossover. Danny Smith involved as well. Calvin Drew, what a big, Curtis Unruh does not stop for Mike Hughes. I think that might be, no, it's not Bobby Dalton, but there's another car blocked from our field of view. That's Wes Spillers, he's got damage. Six cars involved in a chain reaction collision in the crossover on lap 144. Wow, absolutely amazing, Jonathan, as you said. Uh, we might need to put you on oxygen following that incident because you're right, cars went flying everywhere. Most notably, the car of Eastlick here, who ends up motionless uh, on the front stretch of this racetrack. Eastlick took a wild lick from Mark Tunney. Those drivers came together. Tunney now will go back to the pits. Tunney had some kind of a handling problem and uncharacteristically was having some problems out there. And I believe literally the very definition of a chain reaction accident as we await uh, an update here on uh, Don Eastlick. It looks like Eastlick has taken the steering wheel off. So that's always a very positive sign. We are under the yellow flag here, and we will uh, get an update here on Eastlick. Eastlick's out of the car. He appears to be wow. fine. Give him a give him a give I'll him a hand. Give a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. He's okay. And he's a racer, Jonathan. You know why? He's overlooking the damage and saying, "How do we fix this thing and get right back to racing?" That's hey, right. never mind that. I just had a huge accident at the crossover. I want to go back to racing. So Don Eastlick, a real competitor. And he had some major league problems as he and Tunney came together in a huge way. The great news is not only is he okay, he's already looking at over saying, you know, if we just bend the sheet metal just this way, why I can hop back in and then give her a ride. I think that they, Don might try to drive this car off. He was looking over everything, maybe the rear end not being 
Looks like Don holding his right leg a little bit because that was quite a lick. Yeah, you got to wonder sometimes, these guys, despite all the safety gear, that is, uh, there's always little parts of that race car kind of waiting to bite you a little bit. So you wonder if maybe uh, he didn't get hit in the leg with uh, something that was protruding inside the race car. Definitely, he's going to wake up with a bit of a headache tomorrow. Uh, Eastlick joins us, uh, one of our out-of-town competitors, and a pretty wadded-up race car. The good news is he does appear to be unhurt. We will get that car off the race surface. That still leaves your leader, Bruce Tunney. He's following our Speedrome pace truck. Bobby Douthat is in the runner-up position. And then score Wild Bill Tunney in third. At least that is the official designation on the board right now. We are three minutes away from completing our first hour in the 27th Annual Marion K. Spices World Figure 8 Championship. We'll bring the flatbed truck out to tow Don Eastlick's car as the regular tow truck would not do the trick. Obviously something wrong with the rear end of the Eastlick machine. Get a good chance to go down to the concession stands, ladies and gentlemen. Get yourself an ice-cold Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Blossom Chevrolet Speedrome. Blossom Chevrolet, a proud supporter of the Indianapolis Speedrome, coming aboard as track naming rights sponsor for the next three years. Kind of surprising the problems that Mark Tunney was having then. Uh, certainly they were handling related undoubtedly as he uh, had an incident earlier in the evening. And uh, kind of a surprise too with Fred Bear Jr., a guy with tons of experience, great equipment. And uh, Fred Bear Jr. in car number 94, he's had all kinds of problems. Now, if you view the car from this side, everything looks fine. From the other side, it looks like uh, somebody worked on that machine with a huge chainsaw as Fred Bear Jr. has made contact now with a couple of competitors. As you said, it really is an in a situation involved with just getting those laps on the board. And even if you happen to go down a few laps early, Jonathan, it's not necessarily the end of the world. However, we knew that in this world championship, this 27th annual world figure eight championship, we already knew that the pace was going to be absolutely unbelievable. As you said, Jonathan, you can't believe the pace. These guys are literally running as fast as they would if this were a 50 lap feature race. As you know, we put 148 laps on the book. We've got an hour's worth of racing that we've taken care of. So, once again, I'm really bad at math, but we could do 450 laps easy here tonight. In fact, I, I, I fully expect that we will. 450 laps means 900 times through the perilous crossover for tonight's world champion. As we are only two hours away from the checkered flag, this race is still in doubt. I really don't know who could win. You never know what will happen through the crossover and through any type of mechanical problems that will, ha that will happen. We remember earlier this season when Bruce Tunney seemed to have the Jake's 150 well in hand and a $5 part broke down on his alternator, killing all power to the machine. That could happen here. That's what it's all about. Meticulous race car preparation is the name of the game for anyone who wants to compete in the world championship and compete at the highest level. Well, you've already heard the stories that Bruce Tunney works on the car six days a week. One time when Bruce Tunney had a rare engine failure, the story we heard was, well, this week he had to work on the car seven days a week. So Bruce Tunney, never, never a week goes by without him working on that race car. And Actually, as Jonathan said, it is meticulous race car attention. Yeah. Well, actually, whatever you said, eight days a week actually is. Did he? Did he? Yeah. Went, he went to work on it eight days eight that week. Eight day, yes. <laughs> he listened to the Beatles a lot too. Only Bruce Tunney could get eight days out of a week. We've completed the first hour. We're getting ready to go green. 150 laps down for the leader, Bruce Tunney. Here we go. The green flag flies once again. This field all going for the World Figure Eight Championship. The field lines up behind leader Bruce Tunney. Bobby Douthat is right there as well. This restart gives Douthat an opportunity to get up right behind car number one. Douthat, an earlier leader in this race, would like to resume the point again. 
Yes, and here we have the usual cast of characters. Bruce Tunney, Bobby Dalvin, then we have Wild Bill Tunney, and uh, Jonathan, you're so much better at scoring than I. I do believe Sutton is running in position right behind Gord Wild Sutton. Bill Tunney. Gord Sutton doing what he said he was going to do, run his race as well as he could, and almost Jeff Shackelford in front of the leaders. Shackelford's had some troubles today at the crossover. Shackelford's a very good racer, but man, he has had some trouble as Stute weaves through the crossover, and I don't know how he made it. Look at the traffic in the center of this racetrack. Bruce Tunney, your race leader, Bobby Dalvin, Wild Bill Tunney, one, two, and three. They run together on the racetrack. They are through the crossover. The crossover allowing the leaders to go on by. And I see a lot more courtesy in the rear of the field as we have a big... What is going on? Well, I was just pointing out to you that Jesse James has joined us tonight. Unbelievable. The... Jesse James has made his first appearance into the World Championship. Jesse James from Monster Garage now in the World Championship on the 155th lap. There he is in the big old 666 machine. Oh. And we have a big change for second position. Bruce to Bar Bill Tony Jr. taking advantage of a checking up Bobby Dalton. He regains the runner-up spot. Well, I'll tell you what, Dalvin, one thing he has done tonight, Jonathan, is he's erred on the side of caution, and that may actually play into the big dog's hands. Oh. R.J. Norton got spun, I believe. He made contact with Calvin Crane. R.J. Norton, the points leader of the Boston Chevrolet Speed Jump, and a big crash! That's Dalvin! Dalvin has spun out in quarter number one! Dalvin has come together with Jesse James. Ironically, it was Dalvin's crew that helped Jesse James put that car together in the first place. So ironies of ironies as the big dog gets spun by Jesse James. Fortunately, Dalvin does not lose the lap. He seems to be more determined than ever getting through this field. That gives the third position to George Sutton. A lot of cars, and now Tony Anderson right in front of him puts up a big smoke screen as he spins out in the crossover. Unbelievable. Dangerous Danny Turner, he spun, and then uh, Tony Anderson spun. It was going around. It was catching. Bruce Tunney is your race leader. Keep an eye on Bruce Tunney. He has been relentless. Tunney, by the way, does show signs of contact. As Jonathan said, he has the bent sheet metal. We saw it earlier in the evening, but car number one appears that it is all right. Well, in all the excitement, Jay Baker, we missed the pass for second. The old veteran, George Sutton, now running second in this world championship. He got ahead of Bill Tunney Jr. somehow while we were looking at all those spinning race cars. Well, as you said, George Sutton, who's put in a lot of miles here at the speed room, been around the block a few times. He said, I'm still a little young for that rocking chair. He is out in car number six and is giving it the ride of its life. So George Sutton and Sutton and Green come into contact. Christopher Green, one of our alternates here tonight. Christopher Green in car number 52G. And Dalvin has spun out in corner number one, and he loses the lap to the leader, Bruce Tunney. Now Dalvin drops the lap. There are only three cars remaining on the lead lap. Wow, Dalvin has got to be... Well, I don't think you'd want to hear the language that he's muttering to himself as he's had all kinds of problems. Very early on in the race, he was right there, very dominant. And now Bruce Tunney had a checkup. That allowed Wild Bill Tunney Jr. to get ahead of George Sutton on lap 166. Lots of action as the crossover now, a very busy place to be. Wild Bill Tunney, who had been in contact with his brother all night long now, those guys are almost on a completely divergent path. And in fact, Bruce Tunney has a pretty amazing lead over his brother, Wild Bill. So Wild Bill now needs to start uh, 
really working to regain that lost ground to Brother Bruce. Once again, Bruce Tunney has been absolutely unstoppable tonight. There is some body damage to the right side of car number one. I was just going to say that these cars will not be go unscathed. No matter who you are, if you're the last car or the first, you will get some body damage. It's just a matter of how much you get and how much you can keep the car underneath you. Yeah, your car is definitely going to look like it raced at Darlington or Bristol when this evening is over as Bruce Tunney still is your race leader. Wild Bill being shown in second, but quite a bit of distance between first and second in this race. And as Jonathan was pointing out, such a pace being set by the Tunney brothers, most of the field has gone a lap down to the Tunneys. Though it's not a race of set distances, Jonathan, it's a race of laps set. Bruce Tunney so far has put the most laps in the book, but it is a three-hour endurance race, and we're not even near the halfway point. Literally anything can happen tonight. He's and now down to get spun out, come out of corner number two by Ricky Deeds, a big, big pile up out of corner number two. Well, you're right, Jonathan. Not only did Douthat spin, but Douthat collected a bunch of company, and those are the worst ones to get. If you just spin and can continue, it's one thing. Fred Bear Jr. also involved in that incident. Actually, I've got to tell you, the two hard luck guys in this race have been Douthat and Bear. Why? Because they've been so dominant. They were early race favorites. They've had all kinds of problems, and they just had a problem together. Ironically, those two hard luck competitors right next to each other, it's unbelievable how much... Oh, we're going to have... Oh, I thought Douthat was going to get taken out. He's now lost two laps to the leader, Bruce Tunney. Bobby Douthat once again gets restarted and almost gets plowed at the crossover. Just shows you, Jonathan, what can happen in this race. I'll tell you what, I secretly would have bet two and a half dollars with you that Bobby Douthat was going to win this race. Because I'm a big, you know, I'm a big wheel dealer. You know that. You know it. Two and a half dollars is big money. <laughs> well, you know. I'm telling you. But Bobby Douthat, all kinds of problems. Let's hope the big dog can get that car back underneath him. Mount a charge here because we would miss it if Douthat weren't in one of the top slots at the end of this race. Well, we are now on lap 176. Another completion of 25 laps. We'll have a Quick rundown in just a couple minutes. Bobby Douthat, R.J. Norton running together on the racetrack, and Norton and Douthat just came into contact just a few laps earlier. So Douthat definitely having some problems here tonight. Absolutely relentless this evening. If you look at the position of Bruce Tunney, and you look at the position of George Sutton, the third place car is about to go a lap down. That has been the pace that Bruce Tunney, we've seen before here at the speed road, the most dominant drivers do end up lapping the field. That's an absolute display display of brilliance here by Bruce Tunney here tonight. We knew Bruce Tunney was one of the favorites, and he's certainly showing that right here. It'd be interesting to know if there was not a Bobby Douthat, or I'm sorry, a Bruce Tunney, or a Wild Bill Tunney Jr., this race would have a totally different complexion. Are you ready for this? Fred Bear Jr. is completely out of the car. So I think Fred Bear has just decided that maybe he'd rather go bowling tonight, Jonathan, because Fred Bear Jr., completely and totally out of his racing machine. We are now on lap 180. We have completed one hour and ten minutes. By the way, Curtis Unruh getting some driving lessons. He's following one of the best on the racetrack right now. And wow, spinning and producing tons of blue smoke. Wesley Spillers. That is Wes Spillers, who is spilling some blue smoke in the north end of the racetrack. Four brush through the crossover. Unbelievable. I tell you what, these guys... I don't know how they're avoiding accidents at the crossover because it has been so very tight at the crossover as Garius takes very evasive action and does avoid contact at the crossover. George Sutton has done a good job. He's put a little bit more distance between him and uh, the leader, Bruce Tunney, wanting to stay on that lead lap. would like to benefit from a well-timed caution right now. We are getting ever so close to the window of pit stops for these cars. Probably within the next 20 minutes, we should see some pit stops for the leader. I think you're right, Jonathan. Actually, the halfway point's a very good time to pit. It may be just
just a matter of time before your leader peels off and look who got turned sideways, George Sutton, and Sutton goes a lap down to your race leader, Bruce Tunney, and Tunney made very hard contact with a competitor. Tunney made contact, and you know, you worry about the radiators on these cars. So there is some front end damage to our race leaders. He made hard contact. Let's keep an eye on Bruce Sunny. He's, he's seen. Oh, and Bob Foster, Christopher Green. Christopher Green's left front suspension is, is, in, a, is, in, a, is in a wrong angle. He did that right in front of Bruce Tunney. I don't think, well, he might be able to get off the racetrack. Christopher Oh, and Ronnie Sizemore gets plowed by Curtis Underwood with a crossover. Unbelievable. Curtis Unruh, who had been so fast following Wild Bill around, slams in to the pole center, Rodney Sizemore. Sizemore with extensive damage to the left side of the race car. Caution is out on the speedway. Sizemore knows to immediately head to the pits. He'll come under the attention of the Kennys. Oh, and Bruce going for the pits, but it right into the end of Rodney Sizemore. I can't believe it. Sizemore was having all kinds of problems leaving the track surface. He, his suspension is just not right. Bruce Tunney said, hey, uh, this is a great time for me to pop into the pits. And these two guys, who frankly are great friends, very close competitors, arguably the two fastest guys at this racetrack, come into contact with each other. Sutton's going to leave the racetrack. He's going to be able to come to the attention of his pit crew. Sizemore's off. And look who was stopped on the track. Bruce Tunney. Bruce Tunney now wraps race down to the, lead, the leader of the race, who is going to be Wild Bill Tunney Jr. So in Bruce's haste to leave the racetrack, did not see the car of Rodney Sizemore in front of him. Unbelievable action. That's the things we were talking about, Jay Baker. The things that you have to take care of. And, you know, when the caution comes out, you have to, after running so many laps under green, I know it's got to be a hard thing to slow down, but, you know, you That's raise the a thing good you point. Have to think about. Remember, we had an incident here not too long ago with another Tunney, Mark Tunney, who was absolutely running away with a race, made contact with a stopped car at the crossover, and we conjectured later that as all that rapid motion occurs around you, sometimes seeing a stationary object is nearly impossible. I think that's what happened in this particular case. Is here's Bruce Tunney. The world is rushing by at 80 miles per hour, and it's hard to judge a stopped car. One of the things I'm concerned about on this is not just the fact that he's stalled and he's losing laps. That's tough. What I'm concerned about is there may be major suspension damage to this car. We already saw the fact that he, there was some body damage. We also saw the fact that he came into contact. I was concerned about the front end. Then he makes further contact with the stationary size more. And that contact was the hardest contact we've seen from Bruce Tunney. Bruce now getting out of the machine. Obviously a problem with the steering or the movement of the front end. The wrecker and America's best short track crew getting ready to take the number one machine off the racetrack. Bruce Tunney got to be heartbroken because he had this race under control. It looks like also, I hate to speculate, that Bruce is uh, either not feeling well physically or just his mental capacity at the moment. He's got to be devastated. Well, you, you couldn't ask. Uh, you, you couldn't serve up any greater disappointment. You talk about a driver who is absolutely dominant. And as you said, he does appear to be uh, a, a little groggy right now. And that might have been possibly from the contact with Rodney Sizemore. So, so Bruce uh, definitely made very hard contact. And we will uh, find out what's happening here with Bruce Tunney as we circulate the cars around. So, as Jonathan said, this is an absolutely devastating turn of events. There were a lot of fans in the stands for Bruce Tunney. We said early on that George Sutton was certainly one of the favorites. And Sutton, now we have heard reports, Jonathan, that Sutton as a full tank. We have called an ambulance as Bruce Tunney uh, under some distress 
up at the north end of the racetrack. From our vantage point, Jay, I think he's just sitting on the ground next to his race car, and we don't know what. We don't want to speculate as to what might be the problem with Bruce Tunney, but we'll let uh, some of the great paramedic crews always safety first here at the Blossom Chevy Speedrome. We'll get him checked out for some precautionary matters. Yeah, Bruce Tunney, who uh, just. Uh, what a turn of events. Absolutely unbelievable. One guy who put himself in a, in a great situation was George Sutton, who was able to dive into the pits. We are uh, understood that uh, Sutton has uh, refueled that car, possibly changed some tires. So keep an eye on car number six, as Sutton might have put himself in a very good situation to be at least tactically uh, very much in the position that he wants to be at the end of this race. With a three-hour event, absolutely anything can happen. As leaving the track now, the 33X of Greg the Hammer Stute. So Greg the Hammer Stute will take this occasion to dive into the...